everyone, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. Today's tutorial is about uh, glass lac resin. This is the brand I'm going to show you today and you can find this brand in the UK. Unfortunately, you can't find it uh, in the United States, but it uh, ships overseas and I will put the link where you can find it in um, in the UK and also for people that are maybe living in other countries like Spain you can also find it it's a really really good brand and this glass uh, this resin today is an epoxy resin so it means that you need to mix part A with part B I'm going to show you this and give you the details and it is a doming, um, actually doming resin. It's made to pour over a piece of jewelry or anything you want to dome. And you'll see that it re it's really interesting because you can pour it over many, many things. So it is not made to be put into a mold because you need only to work with a thickness up to between two millimeters or even lower up to four millimeters, not more. So not made to put something inside if it's big like a button or something. You need to use other kind of um, resin for this. So, but I really like it and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use. So this is what I have done with only 15 millimeters and okay so in the box first let me tell you this in the box you have this two uh, two lac uh, glass lac it comes with bottle A and bottle B it comes also with two mixing sticks two measuring cups a pipette and also a pair of gloves uh, this time of uh, type of glove, but I've already used them so many times that I'm just using my own gloves today. And in this example, so you really need to, if you're using any kind of other uh, of other brand, you really need to read what's on the packaging to make sure that you're measuring the right weight. So here, for example, this bottle measures 100 millimeter, and they have bigger bottles. This one is 50. That means that you need one part of this, the B, for two parts of A. For example, you want to use about 15 millimeters in total, approximately. You need to put 10 millimeters of this and half of it in B, okay? Always twice more of A and half, like I would say, in B. So with 15 millimeter, uh, millimeters in total, I have domed all these uh, pieces and some of them are really big. So here I have pieces in, um, they were uh, die cuts. This, this and this also are die cuts and you can see that they're pretty big and the doming is absolutely perfect. I have put inside here and I'll come a little closer just to I want to make sure yeah, you can see. I had put little glitters in here, as you can see, but they're quite flat. I'm going to use other ones that are much flatter with a flat back, which is nice. So you can still put something very, very thin, but not too thick. These are wooden pieces, things I have made. I'm going to show you one of these uh, and other kinds of uh, little things I have made some leftovers that I put them together to make pendants. So it's really fun to do. You can resin wood, you can resin paper, you can resin pictures, you can resin, um, what did I say? Pictures, resin, wood, about everything actually. Okay, so let me put this apart and we're gonna use the resin pad too, the one that I showed you previously. So first we're gonna mix our two uh, parts here resin and I'm gonna do again 15 millimeters so I'm gonna use in one of these part A okay so first something important before pouring your resin make sure that your cups and all your tools are really clean and speaking about cleaning it's written on the packaging that when you want to um, clean them you can use acetone and you can use also white spirit, uh, which you can find everywhere in your stores. As for my experience with the pipette, I would not use acetone because this is plastic and I have tried using acetone for cleanups, but it's just eating the plastic. It's not good at all. So if you want to clean that up after using it, first you sh make sure that you're not going to wait until it's dry because when you're resin is completely hard you just need to throw it away you won't be able to take anything out of this pipette 
and if you want to clean it you just put a little bit of white spirit into a bowl or a cup and you just squeeze everything into here make your um, white spirit go up to the end here and back out and you throw it away don't use it again to really clean it up I don't use pipettes that much, but it might be more comfortable for you. That's totally fine. Uh, so now let's get to it. I'm going to put in one measuring cup. I'm going to put, and you've got here some, I'm not sure you're going to see it, but there are some measurements from 10, 20, and 30 millimeters on both. So I'm going to put part A, I'm going to put 10. So part A is quite thick. Make sure that you're really putting the exact amount. I'm not going to be able to show you that perfectly, but you're going to have to believe me. I'm putting part A 10, a little, little, little bit more. Make sure also that your table is leveled, your working space, because other one Otherwise, when your resin is going to dry, it's going to go, it's not going to be straight. Your, your resin is going to be thicker on one side than the other. So make sure that your table is really leveled. Just going to take a little bit off here, just a tiny bit. There you go. And honestly, what I like about this resin is that there is no smell or hardly any smell, which is good because usually resin tends to smell quite hard. Be careful when you pour uh, part B, it's more liquidy, so go really slow. And this is why you should use one cup for A and one cup for B, because just in case you forget that and you pour too quickly, you pour too much, if you uh, pour the both in the same cup, you won't be able to take it away and it's going to be ruined. Okay, so now part B. And now I'm going to use a bigger cup and pour that into my cup. And it's just a random plastic cup. I think I'm going to invest in some silicone cups because, and it doesn't cost a lot, so I won't have to use every time plastic cups, which is not good for nature. So when I can, I try to do something good, you know, recycle and something smaller because cups can be big. And I'm really trying to take everything out of this cup because don't leave too much first because you don't want to waste. And second, because you really need to get the right amount in there. On the package, it says that you've got about 15 minutes to use this resin. Honestly, it's about 20 degrees here in my room and I've used it over 45 minutes and it was still good to use. It was not hardening too much. It was just great. Maybe not, yeah, and you're supposed to use it between kind of 19, 25 degrees uh, Celsius, of course. All right, and the hotter, the quicker it's going to set, so keep that in mind. All right, so now what I'm going to do, ooh, I forget, you need to mix it. Mix it for about three minutes. It's going to be opaque in the beginning, like all epoxy resin, that's normal. Don't worry about the bubbles because they're naturally go going to go away. In second, I'm going to use a lighter. Um, some people prefer to use a straw, but I don't like to use a straw because if you blow too hard, you might push your resin. And sometimes, let's face it, you might also blow some a little bit of spit. And water and resin doesn't go well together, do not go well together, sorry. So yeah, for me, straws, uh-uh. I don't like that. I really prefer to use a lighter and I love candles so I always have a whole bunch of lighters around uh, around me so yeah I think it's it, it's honestly it's much better okay so the first thing I'm going to do now and my uh, resin is setting so the bubbles can go away we're going to prep this piece so it's just some uh, pieces of wood I've bought these uh, all these pieces together it was like a buck maybe 10 different pieces but as you can see this is the original color and it's quite pale so first if you want to buy things like that if you want to color them 
please do so and you're make you're going to make beautiful embellishments and i would consider also making the holes before put, putting your uh, pouring your resin because the resin is so hard afterwards that it might break when you want to make the hole or then drill it so i did the holes already with my uh crocodile and now what i'm going to do and i'm using alcohol markers because there is a coating on this uh, plier wood and if I use regular um, regular markers it's not going to dry so I'm just going over with a little bit of that color and I'm gonna go back inside with some pink what is lacking in this set is that I don't have any blending tool so I'm going to put this one here. This one is done. Let's move it aside. And I'm going to pour my resin on top. All right. So a big part of the bubbles have gone away. All right. And now I'm going to spread the resin right to the edge. Make sure use the light to see exactly where you're spreading the resin. That's really important. Go around your hole and really go up to the edge. Don't be scared. That's the way it's going to be domed. And in case you missed a spot, don't worry, you can, when it's dry, you can always come back and pour a little bit more. All right, I don't see any bubbles, but I'm going to wait a few minutes to make sure that none of the bubbles are going to go back up. And then I'll use the lighter. I think I have something on my stick here. All right, so that was wood. Now I'm going to show you, this is a die cut. It's just paper, normal paper, die cut, and I'm going to put here, I know I said it's not to put anything inside, at least not too thick, but these are flat back embellishments. And I just want to put one or two here, well maybe a little bit more, of these flat back pearls because I have the feeling that it needs some. All right, I hope you'll be able to catch that on camera. I'll show you probably this afterwards, but I think it gives a lot of pop and I'll show you what to do with that in the next video when it's completely dry and cured. So I'm putting this one next to it and I'm gonna pour my resin on top. All right, that's enough for now. And if I need more, I'll put more. And again, and it's going very fast, actually. Don't be worried. Don't be scared. I know that some of you are scared of resin. I used to be when I was a, a beginner not so long ago. I'm not a professional for sure, but now I feel really more comfortable. That's the best way to go. Give it a try. Have fun. Whatever you do, please have fun. Crafting must be fun. And do things the way you like them. I'm here to show you how to do it. Sometimes I've got my own techniques. I have tried different things and I always share what I am more comfortable with. But if you are happier with another technique, that's totally fine too. Okay, I think I'm a bit too close. That's better so you'll be able to see everything. And even though it's paper, I am going to use my lighter on top. Gonna go on top of here. Yeah, I did have little bubbles. And even though it's paper, I'm going very quick, but 
it is taking away all these little bubbles. And come back maybe in five minutes to do it again in case you have some bubbles coming up. It can happen. Now I'm going to show you another material. So this is this was wood, this was paper, and now here I have a piece of, I can't flip it back because everything is painted, but this is, um, how do you call that? Uh, plaster of Paris. I need a nice coat of resin to really make it shiny. And you'll see next time how shiny it is, how hard it is if you use it, and also the fact that it looks like water. It is absolutely beautiful. And the doming effect does give a lot of professional look, a perf perfect finish look. Okay, now on this side I have a, an embellishment. This is also made of wood, but I used acrylic paint and some blings inside to decorate it. I've not made any hole in this one because I want to use this pendant with a bail on the back and I think that with the resin it's going to be gorgeous. I already, I already like the way it looks but I believe that with the resin it's going to be even better. Sorry for my hand. And I'm showing you that whatever the shape is, it's still going to work perfectly. Use the light to make sure that you've got your resin everywhere. Where it's shiny is where you have your resin and where it's not is where you don't have it. So that's the best way you can see if you need to um, Pull your resin really up to the side. Oh, that's perfect. All right. Let me see. I need to make sure that everything is in place before it dries. No, this one needs to be pushed there. And obviously, you need to take your time don't be in a hurry. And now, na last but not least, I'm going to make this one here. So this was made with air dry clay, some uh, acrylic stones. I wanted to do a big cabochon. Not sure yet what I'm going to do with, probably also another pendant. And I still have a lot of resin. So I think I'm going to color it and actually I'm going to use the molds here that I have. Yeah, that's a great idea. So it's getting a little thicker, but I still can really use it. And it's going to overflow, but I don't really mind because I'll always be able to cut it later on and send it down. But I really want this to go on the sides. And I'm also going to use the, the inks, the color resin from Cleopatra because they're perfect. This is, you have six bottles in here. It looks like this. So actually you have six different colors that I spilled this one last time. Plus two transparent ones here. So if you want to make your own colors, you have two empty bottles to do that. So I'm going to use a little bit of red and a little bit of blue, I think, for today. So as I showed you last time, uh, you have embedded into this mat, you have here some molds, and I'm gonna use that actually. So I won't um, spoil what I have here. I have these um, feathers. And I'm going to use this, and I'll put the the color after. I'm going to just fill it with the resin right now. And it's not really deep. It's about two, maybe three millimeters, but it's just fine. And now I'm going to pour that resin inside. 
as I said, a little bit of, whoops, this is way too much. Okay, my bad. And I'm gonna put some, all right. So it's not gonna be the same color everywhere. You'll understand that better when I will unmold the whole thing. And I am mixing a little bit, taking a little bit of my blue here into my red and a little bit in here. I like when it has a marble look. So you can really play with this. Look at that, and I could do more. I still have some left over, so I'm gonna find something to coat. But I think you understood the whole thing. So I'm gonna put something on top to protect my uh, pieces here from dust and also a little bit from light, especially when it cures. It's better in a dark place too. And in about 20 to 48 hours, I'll come back. Actually, it seems to be very cure for me after 24 hours but it recommends you to wait for about 48 hours and it's completely, completely cure after about a week. But honestly, I have used this resin before and I wear the pieces of jewelry after 48 hours and I've never had anything going wrong. It's just maybe to avoid the scratches on the surface, but really it hardens so well that I'm, I'm in love with this resin. So there you go. If you have any questions, please leave them uh, on the comment section below. I always come back to you. Or if you just want to say hello, that's great as well. Again, I will put a link for people in UK where you can find this brand. Um, and uh, please subscribe to this channel and give me some thumbs up. It really helps my channel being a little bit more noticed. And also... Um, subscribe, hit the help, the bell button, <laughs> and share on social medias. Thank you so much. Take care and see you soon.